didn't even realize would put so much money back in my pocket. It's my biggest temptation. And Miles and I had arguments about like the first year of marriage of am I not being authentic online? Like, proudest thing that I've done. Welcome back to the channel. Today is the last day of vlog week. I hope you guys have enjoyed this last couple of days where we're just kind of like catching back up, you know, getting back into the swing of vlogging. And honestly, it's really inspired me to go back to vlogging some more. So I hope you guys have enjoyed vlog week. Let me know if you have in the comments. And today's the last day and I figured let's sit down and have a proper debrief chit chat, let you know what's been going on the last few months, honestly, since I've been kind of on and off. While I straighten my hair, obviously it's already done. This is the end result. But let me tell you, now that I've finished, we talk about all things first year of marriage, finances, counseling, all that good stuff. So buckle up. If you need a nice chatty long conversation, this is what it is. Grab your matcha and let's catch up. Let's just have a girly chat. And that's really what I wanted for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let's get started. This is like the silk press method, if I remember correctly, where you go ahead, you blow dry your hair first. Wow, the obstacles are really obstacling today. I feel like the last time I did one of these was, honestly, I can't even remember. So I feel like this is a much needed chat and I wanted it to be more Q and A style, <laughs> but there really weren't any cues. So this is just gonna be me rambling to you guys as um, a catch up session. And I always love chitty chat chat videos. Oh. To start off, uh, the events of this past week, geez louise, let me tell you guys, I am feeling so much better. I have been stretching, obviously going to the sauna and trying my best to just kind of relax and let my body do its thing. But it's crazy how so much of the, the, the physical really came like maybe days after. I think day two, not even the first day after the accident, but the second day after the accident is when my body really started to like fully relax and the adrenaline calmed down a lot for me. But um, like I said, I feel like such, I, I don't know, I feel like because not, there was no serious injuries that I, I, I don't wanna keep going on and on about it, but it was just, I think much, a, a big lesson learned, but also, wow, what a hopefully once in a lifetime situation that's gonna be because yeesh. I feel so sore, but I'm ready to go back. I really wanted to take this week to work out because I obviously going to, you know, visit my family and stuff, I don't feel like I'm in a routine where I can go work out, but I think I'm gonna force myself to do that. Since I am military, I have military base access. There's plenty of military bases in the area that I can still go to the gym. And I think I'm gonna take full advantage of that this time around. And that's something I appreciate a lot about Miles is that he, no matter where he is, obviously there's always a base around him. So he makes it a point every morning to wake up dumb early, dumb early. And whether it's jet lag or not, and go to the gym and really I could do the same. So I think I should, I think that's going to be my plan. Honestly, this time around, um, is to really take some time and go to the gym and stuff. But obviously I, I want to be able to spend time with family and also might do a quick trip and see some friends around the area as well. Um, I have zero expectations for my hair to grow this year because of the color damage and all of that. So I'm not even surprised that my hair is quite literally the same length, literally the same length. If not, I'm gonna cut it even shorter. Loki wanna do like a Bobiana situation, but I know when my hair is curly, I'm gonna hate it. So not gonna set myself up for that. But they came, they got my car. I've been looking at a few used cars. Um, I don't plan on getting a new car. I think a new car is probably one of the worst uh, decisions a human being can make. <laughs> when I say a new car is, I mean like a brand new, like that year car if it's 2024 i'm not buying a 2024 chance that i'll probably buy a car that's like five years older um i'm huge 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 fan of dame ramsey and he has taught me a lot a lot about living under your means and as much as you guys see me here you know uh, living a good life in hawaii i can only do that because i have no rent um <laughs> And if I could be an influence to you guys, let me be the de-influencer of influences, okay? The reason why you can have a good life is because you're living under your means. And I can say this now, <laughs> I'll tell you what, last year with all things going on with the wedding, I feel like that was probably the year of my most extravagance and I'm not even an extravagant person. But I figured, you know what? You only get one wedding and I was okay with that. I was okay having that be my big purchase year, my big, 
spending year and now it's like all right girl like back to reality back to savings plans back to having long-term financial goals and i think I, i spoke about that in the beginning of this year because honestly it was like january of this year that i realized like yo we spent a lot of money last year um exuberance amount to the point where you probably should get more serious so this year i feel like i've done really really well and i'm so proud of myself in the moment obviously as you're putting like you know giving yourself financial discipline it feels horrible but now several months in i look at myself and i'm like i'm so proud of you girl like i can't believe how far we've come from january and how far we still have to go but it's very encouraging and trust me when i say the first couple months are really hard when you're trying to stick to like you're almost like building a new routine you're building a new um you're building a new structure a new way of life a new lifestyle honestly for yourself and one of the main things i like did was uh really ask myself what are my non-negotiables like for me my friends and going hanging out with my friends and having those experiences was like just like a non-negotiable for me you know i was like i can do without a lot of things but i can't do without my relationships here because we're literally on an island on our own it just felt like giving up that was just that was the one thing i was willing to splurge on or even you know spend money on this past year but everything else for example last year i got my nails done i'd get my lashes done all these things i was like i could give that up easy and it honestly the beauty treatments the glow up treatments were the ones that i didn't even realize would put so much money back in my pocket like holy cow guys when i tell you and then i found the perfect press-ons which i mean i think i talk about these so much i was like what was i doing like not to mention like spending hours of your day hours of your day at a nail salon i feel like i've reclaimed so much so yeah that was one thing i was like oh that could definitely give that up and feel perfectly like life has not changed like my lifestyle did not change because i stopped getting my nails done my nails are still done i still feel put together Another thing that I think really put money back in my pocket is honestly, it sounds crazy, but allowing myself to have much less fast fashion shopping sprees, allowing myself to buy more expensive quality items because when you buy more expensive quality items, like the other day I was at Banana Republic, I realized, okay, let me really see. What do I really, really like? Oh, I am, I love the stuff that I got. And if you guys watched, that was a vlog, that was yesterday's vlog where I was shopping for work items, but I wanted it to be a work item i wanted it to um to be a winter item and i wanted it to be easily uh transitioned into everyday clothes that i could wear here or while i was in the colder areas and i feel like i feel like the stuff that you buy you're so much more attached to when you actually really really like it so that has definitely helped as well is believe it or not being more expensive allowed me to save more money because i'm also not shopping every single day at shein or even target even target i'm like yo i'm a sucker for target oh my god and their stuff is so cute now that really i say that but like target is like my biggest weakness that's my biggest temptation and then honestly (laughs) honestly being married and having financial accountability will also really make you check your spending when it's just me myself and i I, girl who gonna check literally who gonna check me besides my own ego but i think being married this year the beginning of this year we obviously last year was like just a lot but um it was really this year where we really settled into marriage i would say and we went into a financial advisor um met up with the sweetest lady on earth which by the way if you're in hawaii and you need a financial advisor let me know because (laughs) she's amazing 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 this she broke everything down for us she showed us like projections timelines what life would look like if we saved this much amount of money if we invested this much amount of money and what we can leave behind for our children which Honestly, we don't have any kids right now. If you're new here, uh, me and my husband literally live here on our own. We don't have any kids. We obviously want kids um, in the future. And so even just having the thought of looking at a chunk of money that we can leave behind to our children, I'm like, that got me so excited, which if you would have asked me any other time, like literally even like the day before we went into that financial advisor's office, 
like what would you do with a million dollars i would tell you about all of the trips i would take i would tell you about all the places i would want to see the experiences i'd want to have but after going in there and seeing like okay imagine you could leave like four five six million dollars to your children like that brought me so much more excitement and joy and it just also really trivialized trips for me <laughs> again i know i talked about a little bit of this in the beginning of this year but taking a trip really became such a like a minuscule minuscule thing when i thought about oh my god look at all of look at how much money you can leave behind for your children and i don't know if maybe that's just a me thing but that made me so that got me so excited to even start planning for that and i think that's also another thing that really uh helped me stick to my financial goals which honestly i never would have even gone into <laughs> never uh, the office of a financial i don't i wouldn't even know where do you find a financial advisor that's where my mind was at. i'm like wh where you where you get one of those you <laughs> know you just pick them up at target clearly not to his credit it was miles who um found our financial advisor here and he picked so well so great on him <sighs> let me tell you guys and just i feel like i've had these conversations with my girls here but just to kind of go into <laughs> you know a little debrief since you guys were here throughout the whole wedding series this has been it's been a whole year since our wedding but i think i mentioned it before we even went to ethiopia last year that miles and i eloped before coming to hawaii and the reason why is obviously with the military you know moving um me being an international and wanting to have the wedding in ethiopia there were just certain things we had to kind of get ahead of and even then like i feel like we didn't even give ourselves enough time but we eloped pretty soon after we got engaged. And then Miles had to go on deployments. Miles had to go on several like deployment type things where he was basically gone for most of uh, that year. So I feel like we didn't really have a full proper year of m being married. And then obviously last year, when we first got here, we were living in the same house and like really, but we were planning the wedding. So it felt like we were just like doing more of the same because we lived together before we, we got married. Now, Miles and I have different opinions on that, but me personally, I think you really should not live together before you get married. Obviously, hindsight 2020 for me. But like I was mentioning, this is probably the first full year where it felt like, oh wow, like we're we like we're like married, <laughs> like we're husband wife, you know. Um, and and with that came so many expectations. And funny enough, I'm actually in a Bible study situation, kind of kind of like a Bible study with a group of married women right now. And one of the women is going through um, premarital counseling. One of the uh, people at our church, or like a couple at our church. And when I tell you she talks about the stuff that they talk about in marriage counseling is literally every single thing that Miles and I had arguments about like the first year of marriage. So if you wanna just avoid <laughs> the first year of marriage, having like those like just arguments about expectations I highly 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 recommend if you are even if you're close to like walking down the aisle please do marital counseling you would be surprised how freaking um how many expectations I mean Miles and I lived together for god knows how many years before we got engaged and so just imagine we lived together already we we're already kind of doing the husband wife role so we thought oh easy peasy like all you got to do is slap a ring on it no, the expectations that come with okay now that you're my husband here are the things that you need to do and now that i'm a now that you're my wife here are the things you need to do babes babes save yourself the trouble let me be as your internet big sister let me tell you right now it's best that you honestly just go ahead and do marriage counseling and put that as a prerequisite too for your partner if your partner is like i don't know if i want to do that be like bro i'm not marrying you unless we do premarital counseling because i'm not trying to fight with you for an entire year but also i know that th this is like such a growth moment for us and as i'm in this like group of married women it just really shows you there is nothing new under the sun and i know the bible says that but like really truly even within marriage there is no struggle that another person or another marriage has not already gone through so being around a group of women that will like kind of coach you through 
what healthy marriage looks like has been really, really beneficial, and I'm very grateful that I have that right now. This year has been a very growth moment for me, but all right, we're starting on the second half of my head. Are you guys seeing how quickly this is going? Is it just me? I don't know. I feel like this is so much faster than using um, any other straightener that I've used. Maybe it's taking the same amount of time, and I just like the fact that it's also combing my hair in the process, but I feel like it definitely gets all of the little the little strands. I do think that my hair does frizz up super quick though, but I don't know if it's the straightener's fault or if my hair is just, you know, lacking oils or what the case is. But let me know what you guys think if that's, wh wh why? Why is my hair doing that? Why does my hair frizz up so quickly? And I know before you guys tell me, I love my curly hair, but I, ugh, like it's really when it's straight that I'm like, <sighs> curly hair when it's, like the blonde curly hair is just unmatched. She is really that girl. Like you can't tell her anything. Straight blondes, um, you know, you could really see the imperfections. That's another question I get all the time is how, what color did I get my hair or what did I ask for when I went to get my hair dyed? And I asked for, I've asked for more of a neutral to cooler toned blonde and she's done balayage on it believe it or not balayage especially if i go in with my hair straight like i'll go in and have her color my hair while it's straight so i know it's gonna look good when it's straight the balayage turns out so well and especially when your hair is curly it looks flawless it looks so freaking good so if you're planning on getting your hair dyed or really like putting any kind of color in your hair go in with it straight especially if you're somebody that straightens your hair pretty often <sighs> I forgot. I got a matcha today, which I don't know why I did. Because I'm just going to drink a Red Bull right after this. I really thought I was doing something with that. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It tastes really good. But it tastes like a refresher. I, I don't feel like I'm getting any energy from this. It is keeping my headache away. So maybe that's a good way to kind of, if you're trying to drink less coffee. But what's the point of drinking less coffee if I'm going to be drinking a Red Bull at the end of the day? And the one thing I'll tell you, don't do as I do, do as I say is my Red Bull addiction. I wish I never started. I wish I never tasted and seen how good a Red Bull is because girl, I'm hooked. It's got me, got me by the throat. I've gotten to the point where I'm buying like giant packs and I know it's so bad for you, but I, you know, I will say if I drink a Red Bull, it's usually because like I, I have to like, I have a heavy working session day, you know? Um, and if I'm drinking a Red Bull, I'm not doing any, ooh, if I'm drinking a Red Bull, I'm not drinking any other, um, caffeinated drink. It's either a Red Bull or pre-workout. I don't know. I'm not perfect. But I think to myself, if my only vice in this life, <laughs> not that it is, but if my only vice in this life is that I'd like a, I like a good Red Bull, a nice peach nectarine on a warm day to get some work done, like, let me live, you know? I have had some vices in this life. I have had some vices that I have had to overcome. <laughs> and there, you know what's crazy? I feel like there are certain things that, certain creators here that are just so open about the things and the life that they've lived and the things they've come out of. And I wish, I wish I could share those things. But I know that um, I have uh, parents that I want to honor and I feel like certain things I'm like yo it's not just about you like you really do represent your family as well on here especially when I'm on social media so I do my best to like not so much hide those things from you but I really do want to honor my parents you know and I don't I don't want my actions to reflect on them either so so I think maybe at some point in time maybe when we're a little bit more further removed from <laughs> those days that I feel like I can share those things um or maybe you know if you catch me at the airport or at a Starbucks and we're just chitty chat chatting then we can talk through those things but yeah I don't know what you guys thoughts are on that because I'm I mean those are the like the most relatable content creators and I saw this Arab girl also say this I think she was Arab um about like how, like you know her life and her her thoughts and how she wants to op be open and share those things but she has foreign parents and there's just certain things where it's like even if your parents are okay with you being on social media there there's certain things that they're definitely not okay with and there are certain things that they don't want to be news or <laughs> conference 
<laughs> and they want to confidently like <laughs> they want to confidently be proud of you for being on here and creating the life you know especially because i feel like a lot of my uh followers or people here you guys are like i think from the ones i've met especially the ones the those of you that have come up to me and we've actually like had conversations i believe that most of us are around the same age um usually it's girls and usually we're either east african of some sorts or whatever again i'm sure there are those of you that are not i'm just the ones that i have met have i feel like we have a very similar upbringing so i think you guys understand what i'm saying here uh, the pressure of wanting your parents to be proud of you and also to honor your parents and not um you know be a certain type of way i think is just it honestly it may seem like oh you're not being authentic online and i had this thought to myself am i not being authentic online like by choosing to like not put certain things that maybe i would want to talk about or are a trend to talk about is it being inauthentic by not having by not by me being on here and not doing that but i thought to myself no i think it's the most authentic thing to want to respect your parents is just uh sometimes for lack of a better term for lack of a better word some things that are trendy are just debauchery <laughs> debauchery just absolute debauchery and it seems trendy when you're young and you're like you know 19 20 but now at 30 there are certain things that i'm like thank god i didn't join that trend especially because i was on tiktok guys like i was on tiktok in 2020 like tiktok 2020 was just it was the good days of tiktok but it was dangerous because now people are seeing there are certain trends that we were doing or i guess i wasn't really participating in because i was afraid of my parents um but people were participating in that now is biting them in the butt because girl not every trend is for you i think that if you're somebody that lives by the book a little bit um and you care about what your parents think then there are certain things that you know you just can't do or say online and that also brought me to the thought i know i'm rambling here but literally this is this is a little insight into my brain right I thought to myself if there are certain things that I do not want to show on social media in fear that my parents I would be dishonoring my parents or like I don't want them to to see certain you know like you being young and dumb like I just don't want them to see that I thought to myself I'm like oh my gosh if I am if I claim to be a Christian and I you know have my vices then really why do i not fear god more than i fear my parents like girl like what's the point of calling yourself a christian if you have no fear of the lord which is like i think it says it in proverbs actually that the, the fear of the, the wisdom is the fear of the lord like do i certainly wasn't wise <laughs> in my lifetime but really and truly that's when i realized like yo i don't think that i fear my creator the way i fear my parents <laughs> It's funny in some sense because, dang, my parents really instilled that fear in me. But also, you know, it's not even, like, a fear out of, like, you the way you fear the cops. Like, where it's, like, I don't really know you. I don't really care about you. But I'm afraid of you because I know you have authority. It's more of a fear of, like, I fear losing their respect. I fear losing their love. And why do I not have that same way? Like, why am I looking at my creator the same, the way that I look at cops? I don't know. I should think about my creator or have the fear love and respect for god the way i fear love and respect my parents it's not and so and so there are certain things that i'm like no i don't care to show them i shouldn't i shouldn't even care to do them let alone show them like you know okay perfect timing actually my hair is done wow okay love it hate my ends but love the hair definitely need to do a little choppy chop right here i'm gonna curl it a little just to give it a bit of definition and then i think you guys heard mouse and i are going to go and shoot some content for his real estate stuff and then and i think i'm gonna go to hang out with some of the girlies tonight for a little salsa night love a salsa night love a salsa night spanish culture is just Outside of Ethiopian culture, honestly and truly, Spanish culture is really where it's at. Like, I love Spanish culture. I make this my declaration. I will learn. I will learn how to speak Spanish, okay? I will. Before, maybe that's like a, a goal for me in my 30s. 
as I'm entering this new decade of life. Um, not yet, not yet though, that's next year. I will learn to speak fluent Spanish and I've been pitching the idea to Miles to go to Costa Rica to surf Costa Rica. Um, and you know, I think about my 20s now too, I'm like, yo, I really learned how to surf. Like, damn girl, you really learned how to surf. How wild is that? Like, you gotta give yourself big ups sometimes. And I think like one of my proudest things that I've done as a human being in this life is I learned how to surf. Like, that's wild. Younger me would be so proud of that. And I, I think certain things, it's like the love you have for yourself has to be like the way you love a young child. It can't be a narcissistic, like I'm better than everybody love. It's like the kind of love, the way that like, see yourself the way God sees you, like his daughter, his like sweet young child. And my friend who has uh, daughters here, the way I love their kids, I'm like, yo, I certainly do not love myself the way I love other people's children, let alone not even my own. So imagine the way God looks at us as his own creation, his children. And he's like, yo, you really should love yourself the way you love a child, you know? And I think that's like the pride I have in me teaching myself how to surf is not because it's not like a it's not like an icky pride like oh yeah i'm better than everybody who doesn't surf it's more of a wow i'm so proud of myself that i got through because the first couple of months of surfing guys are the worst you're literally just getting annihilated by waves <laughs> you're falling over that fear of sharks by the way never really goes away like you're constantly like oh my god i'm in the moment wait was that a shadow? Was that me? Was that my board? Was something in the water? And you know there's something in the water. You know because you're in the ocean. <laughs> so to overcome all of that and then to learn how to surf is just bananas. So that's why I'm hoping. I'm hope. So my goal is to have the same level of pride in learning in learning Spanish because I really want to learn Spanish. Obviously, I know I'm Harik. Um, and I plan on utilizing that, but I really want to learn how to speak Spanish. All right. By the way, to get this like beautiful voluminous swoop, like this like curtain bang type swoop, which my hair, my hair has grown because I cut this like the last time I straightened my hair a couple months ago, but, um, is to literally just get this comb and comb it upwards. And then like you guys saw, like flip it out and then you get this beautiful like bump you get this bump <laughs> up here <sighs> all right i'm gonna put a little bit of argan oil and my friend lisa got me this one which she's such a cutie pie i mean really to get somebody hair oil because she saw how my hair was fried after um i got my hair dyed and she ordered this for me but just gonna put a little bit of argan oil um on from here downwards I feel like with blonde hair, especially my hair being blonde, it doesn't get frizzy, it doesn't get, um, it never gets too oily. <laughs> There's no such thing as too oily, it just gets really freaking dry. Mm -hmm. 